Does one thoughts break their wudu? What? Do your thoughts break your wudu? If you think that by thinking wrong things is making you to feel dirty, renew your wudu. If you think that it makes you so dirty you want to take a ghusl, I'm not going to stop you. Go take a ghusl. People are going to scream until they're blue in their face, oh, he's talking about bidah. I'm not saying that it is uh, obligation. I'm saying whatever makes you to feel cleaner, go and clean yourself. If you feel you say something and your mouth is dirty and you want to brush your teeth, go ahead and brush your teeth. When you have a wudu, it is also recommended, Holy Prophet I'm saying, to make a wudu on top of a wudu. It is light upon light. In fact, our nation, one of the gifts given to our nation, is that it will appear on the Day of Judgment, those ones who are always in wudu, and this is for those ones, those Wahhabi shaitan kinds, to say, no, no, don't take wudu. You don't have to keep wudu. Wudu is only for prayer. That they oppose people from keeping their wudu all the time. I've met people like that. This is for them. Because one of the signs on the Day of Judgment is those who arise on the Day of Judgment, their limbs will be shining with light. This is what Holy Prophet said, because they are always in a state of wudu. So, more spiritual that you are getting, meaning more detailed, more refined you are. That time, you're not waiting for a big dirtiness to come to you to clean. Every little speck of dirtiness that you have in your eyes, it is very huge and you have to clean it, isn't it? So that time, if you think that you need to refresh yourself because your thoughts were not clean while you're in wudu, I'm not going to stop you if you say that you want to renew your wudu. But whether or not you break your wudu, we say according to Shariat, you don't. It's very clear. For those ones especially who are concerned about us being on the Shariatic level. Shariatic level. So, but let's not get into that. I was going to say something. Zakat. of property is one fortieth, isn't it? To put it very, very simply, it's one fortieth. That is according to the mazhabs. But if you follow the mazhab of Siddiq al-Akbar, according to his shariat, it is not one fortieth, it is everything that he owns. This is zakat. No need to burden ourselves too much, to make it too much heavy for us, although we are in the way of Siddiqul Akbar. Question yourself then that time, how much of me belongs to me? How much of me belongs to my Shaykh, belongs to Allah? property, everything. Then that time you understand a little bit where Fana is and where you are. Salam alaikum.